Alrighty, uh, we'll get going here. My name is Allison Groves, everyone. I um, have the privilege of taking care of our community here at Zapier, and today is a is a fun day for me because uh, I'm joined by probably one of my dearest friends in the world, and I'm very very glad that we get to uh, to work together today. Uh, we've worked together in the past, and and uh, she's a, a very very good friend to me, and at Buffer is a very very good friend to Zapier. So. Um, I just want to introduce uh, Courtney Sider, who's here with me today. Who is there? She goes. I thought I thought I was gonna have to yell at you to unmute yourself. But <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Courtney and I are actually in the same city, but we decided to do this uh, virtually today to so that we weren't awkwardly sitting across from each other. But how are you doing this morning? Courtney? I think that might have been fun, but it's raining, so it might be easier this way. Right. I'm doing great. I'm really excited to be here. Zapier is one of our favorite tools at Buffer, and you're one of my favorite people, and our customers are all awesome, so this is going to be a really, really fun day. Yeah, so what I thought we would cover here today is we really want to kind of show off some really fun and unique ways that you can automate data into or even out of Buffer. I know that into makes a lot of sense for a lot of people, but there's also some really cool ways you can automate data out of Buffer. So uh, working with all of your social data, um, blog content that you might be producing yourself, um, curating any content that you might be doing, uh, we've got a lot to cover today. So um, I thought at first off I'd let Courtney talk a little bit about Buffer. I know that most of uh, most of you who are joining us today are probably Buffer users, but um, there's probably more to Buffer than you actually know. Sure thing. Um, so if you are um, just getting to know Buffer, I'll give you a quick rundown. Um, Buffer, we tried to make it the simplest way to share and schedule content to social media. So the networks we work with are Twitter. Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google Plus, and you choose your schedule for each day or let us choose it for you if you'd rather. And your updates will automatically go out just when you want for those networks. Um, then you can go back into Buffer to see how your posts perform, check out our analytics and see clicks, shares, favorites, comments, um, and that information should help you optimize your social media strategy even further. So that's a little bit of info about Buffer. <laughs> awesome. That was a, that was like the best 30 second intro I think anyone could do. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, so I know that you guys actually have some pointers or tips yourself, some some content that you've put together on how to automate um, social media, so why you would want to do it uh, and some pointers about doing it. Yeah, we talk about um, social media automation a lot on the blog and sort of internally at Buffer because it's a core part of what we do and it's also one of those like tricky areas where you want to make sure you're doing everything the right way. You want to automate the right amount to make things really quick and easy and efficient and you also want to um, also include that human element so you're having real conversations, you're not automating um, the, uh, the chats with people, the sort of human element of it. Um, so what we do is um, try and work smarter and not harder at Buffer. That's one of our sort of like core mantras and automation is one of those great tools in your social media toolbox that can help you do that. Um, in our experience, it's not a set it and forget it type practice. Um, automation is more of a set it and check it and tweak it and then repeat all that and do it all over again kind of practice. Um, and uh, though we do not automate conversations, as I mentioned, we do try and automate things like evergreen content, um, latest blog posts, curated content from other people uh, whose work we really like and admire. Um, and when possible, we try to customize our messages for our different networks also. So it's really not entirely a hands-off process, um, but when you do find that perfect ratio of social media automation, um, it's a great way to make the time that you are spending on social media as productive and as profitable as possible. So we've got a few... Um, resources on automation that have some great sort of tools and guidelines, pointers. I'm just going to put those into the chat room. And I should say we will share those um, ourselves. So if you come back to this page that you're on right now, anytime from say in the, in the next half hour on, um, we'll have this recording and we'll have all of these sort of um, resources that Courtney is talking about, all the automation stuff that I'm going to talk about so you can come back anytime and reference it. And Courtney, before we kind of jump into the automation stuff, you guys are such huge Zapier users. I think you should share a couple of the non-buffer ways that you guys use Zapier. I think there's so <laughs> there's a couple of cool ones in there. Yeah, I would I would love to. We um, we use Zapier so much and um, sort of 
of our central hub, as, since we're a remote team, like we don't have an office that we all go to, we're scattered around the world. And so our sort of like water cooler, central hub, office type thing is HipChat. And we use Zapier to send all sorts of different stuff to HipChat. So um, we will send comments on the blogs to HipChat. We'll send new blog posts themselves to HipChat so people can see them and uh, get back to people who have comments and questions. Um, our developers will send GitHub notifications and pull requests. Um, our amazing customer service heroes will send um, Help Scout tickets through HipChat so we can um, sort of immediately see what's going on and take action to help our customers there. And then we have some sort of like um, weird use cases that I don't know that will be helpful for anybody but Buffer, but they're fun for us. Like one we do is um, we are able to request Kindle books and get those for free um, from Buffer. So we've set up like sort of a weirdly elaborate like Wufu to Trello to HipChat kind of form um, through Zapier so that we all know what anyone is reading. It's a great way to like sort of get book recommendations and make sure you're always reading something great. I think that's my favorite one is is automating your books through to the rest of your team. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, we send it to HipChat and we send it to a Facebook group that all of us are members of. So either of those places that you frequent, you can always get a good book recommendation. That's so fun. So I think the first thing that we wanted to actually hop into here is social automation itself. And I know that that's a really, really broad topic um, and we could probably spend an hour talking about it. but. Uh, I know that there's a couple of, of use cases that we've both seen uh, folks using as far as automation goes. Um, so while I start sharing my screen here, I thought maybe we could uh, chat about a couple of those. Um, any, anything in the social realm that you would want to talk about? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. So as I mentioned, um, with Buffer, you can share to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google+. And with Buffier Plus, did I say Buffier? <laughs> with Buffer <laughs> Plus Zapier, uh, we've got some really cool additional networks that you can try. Um, for instance, Instagram. Um, when you post to Instagram or you like an Instagram post or you tag something on Instagram, uh, you can use Zapier to send that post into your buffer queue, which is really handy. Uh, for Pinterest, when you pin something on Pinterest or uh, when anyone adds something specific to a particular board that you've selected, you can use Zapier to send that pin into your buffer queue. And YouTube is a great one too. When you post any new videos to YouTube, you can set up Zapier so that new videos go directly into your buffer queue. Um, and we've also got, um, of course, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. You can connect those to your buffer queue um, if you like. And that might be handy if you wanted to like connect a business account into your personal account or vice versa. You know, I really enjoy sharing a lot of buffers posts, and maybe um, that would be sort of a handy zap for me to be able to sort of handpick which ones I wanted to go in what direction. Yeah, and I know that we mentioned this earlier, but I was just uh, showing here. We've got, uh, like Courtney mentioned, uh, a couple of social media automation. Um, pieces of content that they've written, guides, um, strategies. So there's the social automation guide, and uh, there's another one here which Courtney dropped in the chat room. And again, I'll have um, in our little our little recap of the resources. And we also have one too. Um, doesn't necessarily cover Buffer specifically, but I think it's like 101 ways to automate social media. So I'll be sure and add that to the resources as well. Wow. Um, but Instagram, I think, is the is a, is a big one for folks. Um, not that Instagram itself is necessarily locked down, but you really don't see a whole lot of um, sharing with that. Um, you know, you can't necessarily, it's hard to get their stuff into to Twitter feeds sometimes, and uh, so there's a lot of sharing that can be done with Instagram. And since it's such a visual platform, you know, we want to make sure that we get the images out where we want them to go. And so I know that doing Instagram to buffer is probably one of our most popular use cases. Uh, so I thought I would quickly kind of show off how this works and how easy and quick it is to set up. And then once this is done, uh, just like everything else we're going to go through today, uh, once you set this up one time, it's automatically just going to run in the background so you never have to worry about it. Uh, and once again, I'll add one more time that if you have any questions while we're chatting through things, just pop them in the chat room. If you scroll down the page you're on, there'll be a chat box in there. I know Courtney's going to ask uh, or answer some questions, uh, and one or two of my teammates might be lurking around in there too. Um, but 
since we're talking social and we'll focus on Instagram, I thought I would show off uh, just how, again, how quickly this is and easy it is to set up. So there's a couple of options when it comes to Instagram. Um, I'm going to focus on new media posted, but uh, you can do all kinds of things with Instagram. And st take one step back here. This automation, we're looking at things from a one-to-one -one connection. So when one specific thing happens, I want to automate uh, an action, like we call it. So here I'm saying, when I post a new photo to my Instagram account, I want to add that directly to my buffer queue. So that's how all of these automations work. We're just looking at them as a one-to-one -one, uh, connection. But like I said, you can do um, tagged images, uh, liked media, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going to focus on uh, new media posted here. So when I've got that selected, when this particular thing happens, I want to add it to my buffer queue. Uh, I can connect my accounts to Zapier. So I can say uh, I've got my Instagram connect account connected. That's a tongue twister. Um, or I can go ahead and connect one if I don't have one already. It takes about 10 seconds to connect. Connect my buffer account. Again, takes a couple seconds to connect if you haven't done that already. Uh, Instagram is actually pretty easy. For, for this particular trigger, we just know that we're looking at your Instagram feed. So anytime you have new media posted to your Instagram account, we're going to trigger on that. And then the final step here, you can see this doesn't take any time at all. We just need to match that up to our buffer queue. So we're going to say, what profile do I want this to go in? Uh, so we've got our Twitter account, LinkedIn, Google+, Facebook. This is actually our Zapier buffer account. So um, that's what we have connected to, to our buffer account. So you would need to choose a profile. So I've got that going into Twitter. And all I need to do from here is click on Insert Fields. And that's going to bring data over from Instagram and match it up to my buffer queue to just push it right into it. So what I've done is I've selected the caption text here. And I've also selected the photo URL. So I want the photo uh, to go directly into my buffer queue and the text from the photo, so the caption. And then once that's done, that's all I need to do. There's a couple of other options here you can select, like if you want that to run automatically or immediately, I guess I should say, if you want to put it at the top of your queue. But when you do this, that's actually going to apply to everything moving forward, So, or at least as this uh, particular automation is concerned. So, you, you know, I would only use these if you really want to automatically and promptly share uh, whatever it is you're working with. But once you have literally those three things selected, all you need to do is then you can hop down to the bottom and test it out and see what it looks like. And for a little bit of fun earlier today, I tested this out. And this is what it looks like in my buffer queue. So last night I had a little accident. I was making some, uh, I'm a home brewer. I was making some beer for, some, for a friend of mine, and it blew up in my face. And so I posted on Instagram. So this is what I've got in my buffer feed now, uh, or my buffer queue, I guess I should say. I've got the photo here. Um, I've got the caption. And it's queued up to, uh, to go out within my queue. So that's really all you need to do. And it's, as you can see, just a couple of clicks, You're selecting where in Buffer you want it to go, what exact data you want to pull over from Instagram. And once that's done, it's done. And it will always push your new photos from Instagram into your Buffer queue to go out wherever that might, uh, wherever you might want it to. And I know that we were talking about all kinds of social things here. And um, we integrate with all kinds of social options. So you can see buff buffers right there. Uh, so Ooh. if you had any other social things that you wanted to connect and send a buffer, you could do that. Um, but we know that Instagram is a really popular one. So we thought we would uh, take you all through that. Um, the that next photo should go everywhere. That photo should go everywhere. <laughs> Oh, man, what a night last night was. <laughs> um, so the next really cool thing to talk about, and I know that it's like near and dear to a m many, many a marketer heart, is uh, sharing content that you have created, um, blogs that you've written, et cetera, um, with uh, socially, uh, however you want that to go. Um, but, you know, the you never want to have to, like, remember to do that or, uh, you know, anything like that. You just want to set the post, do the post, and move on. And so uh, with automation, you can actually create this content, um, whether it's a WordPress blog or anything like that, and have it automate right uh, directly into your buffer queue. And, and I know that um, that there's some, some cool things that Courtney has seen. And as a content creator herself, I know would find this really helpful. 
Yeah, definitely. So um, one thing that we like to do is have blog posts go out automatically, and Zapier is a really cool way to do that. Um, and then later on, um, one thing that we like to do is go back into the buffer queue and just sort of check and see how everything has done. It's a great time to sort of like A-B test, try some different things, um, use those analytics that um, Buffer is able to bring in really quickly to try changing the wording or the formatting. You can try different headlines. You can add a new image or a different image and then just pick it up and put it right back into your buffer queue and share it again. This is something we do with almost every post. It's a great way to um, sort of really quickly A-B test headlines or other elements of social media posts to always keep honing in on what's effective. But it's so handy to be able to sort of have that send automatically with your initial blog post so then you can focus on just like making it better, optimizing it as you go along with the next time. Yeah, there's definitely no uh, copy and pasting or anything like that because you've already set it up so it's going to end up in your buffer queue and like Courtney said you can just focus on the most important thing which is constantly trying to make your content better. Um, so WordPress I think is a really good example of this. Uh, there's also some Tumblr stuff you can do which I know is quickly becoming a really really popular content platform uh, for creators. Uh, but WordPress is, is about as ambiguous as it gets these days. It's everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Um, and so setting up this, this simple automation uh, can make that so much easier for you. So instead of, like I said, copying and pasting from stuff that you've already done, you just focus on creating the content and then making it better. So the way that this looks in Zapier is we're just saying anytime I have a new post on my WordPress site, I want to automatically add that to my buffer queue. And the setup is virtually the same from Instagram. We've connected our WordPress account. We've connected our Buffer account, obviously. Uh, we're, we just need to say, you know, when do what posts do we want to trigger on? Do we want to trigger on published posts, uh, drafts, uh, pending? That's totally optional. It's up to you what you set or the post type if you prefer. And then in step five, again, we're just saying, okay, what information do we want to pull from WordPress and put into our Buffer queue? So I've selected the profile that I want to use from, from the drop down there and the text of that update. So when I click on insert fields, again, just like Instagram, we're going to pull over that data from WordPress. And I think the best thing to do here is to just put in the title and the link. And so when it, whether it's a tweet or a Facebook message or whatever it might be, you've got uh, the title, you've got the link to, so people can go to your content. And then, like Courtney said, you can come back to that within Buffer anytime. Uh, check out your analytics, play around with it a little bit. You'll know what the post title is, so you can uh, maybe do weird, <laughs> weird strange A/B testing of your of your content coming directly from your blog over in Buffer. So that'd be a fun way to like uh, you know try out headlines, see what titles work, um, anything like that. So it's no more than five clicks here, really and you've got that all set up and then anytime you post something to your WordPress blog it's going to funnel directly into your buffer queue without you ever having to think about it and you can focus on the important stuff. Um, so that's a really fun way to, to focus quickly on um, doing nothing but content and letting the automation kind of happen in the background. Um, and the final thing though, I think that we actually talked through this a lot yesterday, Courtney and I did, and just had more and more fun brainstorming with it, is actually curating content. So, so much of what we do during the day as marketers is reading and consuming information and we co constantly come across stuff that we want to share. Uh, and I know that using uh, Buffer is a, obviously the best way to do that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, we... Um... We had a lot of fun talking about this, and we um, talk a lot about content curation on the Buffer blog. We've we've discovered that it really is one of those things that um, marketers love doing. It's something that can really provide your audience with quality information. It can grow your authority and your trust and your thought leadership, and it's a great way to improve your relationship with the people and the organizations whose content you share. Um, but consistently finding great content to share is one of those things that takes marketers the longest. Um, so the key seems to be to really find a great way to scale that content curation process so it's really efficient, takes you less time and energy. 
And if you can create a system where like the best content for your niche is really easy to find, easy to tag, easy to access, um, then you should be able to just sort of like sit down for maybe a few curation sessions a week and fill up your social cues with great content really quickly. So that's sort of like the goal and the dream. Um, <laughs> and uh, we, we thought of like a few ways that um, Buffer and Zapier, Buffier, as we're saying now, um, Buffier, could, yes. could work together. Yeah, that's the hashtag, Allison. It's it's all happening on social media. Um, <laughs> uh, so we thought of some ways that Buffier could um, help you be a little bit more efficient in maybe developing the system or like fine tuning your social media curation system. Um, so we looked at tools like Evernote. Feedly, Trello, Google Docs, um, things you might be using already or you might be sort of thinking about using as part of your content curation process. Um, and there are some really cool ways that um, Zapier and Buffer together can lend a hand there. Yeah. So in, I, oh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to show it off, but keep going. Oh, okay, yeah. So I'm just going to go through the tools really quickly. So in Evernote, when you create a new note in Evernote or tag it with a word, like buffer, for example, um, Zapier can send that note into your buffer queue. Um, kind of the same deal for Feely. When you tag an article in Feely, um, Zapier can, can send that particular article um, into your buffer. And then Google Docs, if you're sort of like keeping everything uh, contained in a Google Doc as far as what you want to share, when you create a new row in a Google Sheets spreadsheet, um, Zapier can send that information into your buffer queue as well. Kind of the same same deal with, uh, with Trello, with a new activity. Um, Zapier can send that new activity into your into your buffer queue, and I think Allison is going to show off um, the Evernote integration there. Yeah, and since these are virtually the same across the board, I just want to show off the kind of key component here. And I think when we were looking through really cool use cases yesterday, this is one that really jumped out at us, um, and that's using Evernote when you create a new note in Evernote to sort of curate that content right into your buffer queue. And the really fun thing about this is, you know, I know that people use Evernote for all kinds of stuff. Um, I know that I used it, or still do use it, to uh, curate recipes and whatnot for myself, uh, my personal life. And I know how quickly notes can kind of add up. <laughs> and you know, there's not, you don't necessarily want everything going into your buffer queue. And so the same thing can be applied to anything that we've talked about today. If you only want certain things to go from whatever uh, tool you're using into your buffer queue, you can use filters to do that. I think this is just a perfect example of how that works. So we've got a notebook selected here. So we're saying any new note that we had from Evernote, we want that to go to buffer. But we don't want all of our notes going to buffer. We just want notes tagged <laughs> with buffer. So we can say tags exactly matches buffer. And that way, anytime I create a new note in my Evernote notebook and tag it with buffer, that's what's going to be sent into my buffer queue. So a very, very simple way to, and the same thing can be applied to you know, anything that we've talked about today, like I said, but uh, content curation is a very, very tedious process. So if you can actually do the enjoyable part of it, which is consuming the content and thinking, you know, this is something that I would love to share, doing this one simple automation can save you all that time so you're actually just consuming and and loving and doing all those things that you love to do uh, and not the tedious part of constantly trying to move things back and forth uh, we're just going to set that up for you and I know that we have we've uh, gone on quite a bit here but the one there's one other thing that we, that kind of came to us yesterday as we were going through things and that is all the cool ways that people actually use buffer to send information elsewhere and I know that when we looked at this we were first like well should we talk about that and then we the more we got into we're like this is really cool so I think one of the coolest things that we discovered yesterday was seeing ways that people actually share what's going on internally so they're using buffer to say to tell the rest of their team uh, how they're you know what they're sharing and what they're working on. Yes. So we um, we grabbed a couple of uh, possibilities here. Um, if these can be really helpful if you want to like communicate your social media activities to a team you're working with, or maybe keep a quick record of what has been posted to your social media accounts. 
Um, so if you use something like Slack or HipChat or Yammer as a tool to sort of like connect your, your workplace, your, um, your work team, um, you can use Zapier to send new stuff from your buffer queue right into those channels. So those are handy to just keep your whole team aware of what's going on as far as like what we're posting on social media. And it also might lend a hand if you are interested in having more members of your team share socially. Like it really helps if you know you can get your content boosted by um, a number of your teammates. Um, so this is a really great way for them to have access to that information really quickly and easily. We also noticed that um, Trello and Evernote and maybe even Rescue Time could be um, some things that you might want to explore as far as sending items from your buffer queue into those places. If you just want to like keep track of what you've shared or keep notes about it, um, and then spreadsheet, kind of a kind of a similar way. If you um, want to use it for your own records, or it's kind of like a basic reporting to others that you might want to share around, um, using a zap to send your buffer queue into a spreadsheet could be a handy way to keep everyone on the same page there. And I just want to put in a little um, bit of a plug for a buffer business. Um, if you are doing any sort of like regular reporting to a team or to a boss and you want to take it beyond um, sort of the spreadsheet method, we would love for you to give Buffer for Business a try. Um, we've got lots of rich analytics and insightful charts and graphs and easy ways to sort your sort of best performing content and export all that data. So it really kind of depends on like what level you're at. If you are sort of doing it on your own and feeling good about where you are, a spreadsheet may be the absolute perfect fit. And um, if you are working with a team and more interested in sort of like getting to that next level where you're sharing with teammates and um, reporting what you're doing, then Buffer for Business could be a good thing to try. If you want. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So we've gone on for quite a bit here. Um, are there any questions that we can tackle that maybe have come in while we've been going on? Do you notice anything? Yeah, let's see. Um, is there a way to include a WordPress featured image from a blog post automatically? I am not so sure about that one. Do you? Would you happen to know? I d and this would harken back to my support days. Um, I believe that we're not quite there yet. I think that the featured image uh, from WordPress is a relatively new thing. Uh, I could just totally be making that up, but that seems right. <laughs> so I don't quite think we can get there yet. Um, but I know that we see that quite frequently, um, so that's probably something that we will be able to do at some point. Got it, got it. Here's one. Um, I bet you'll know the answer to this one. Can I configure Zapier to send an Instagram post to Buffer from an account I follow rather than one I own? You know, I would need to look at triggers for that. So this is, I guess, a great place for, for me to plug a certain... Zapier resource, which, so what am I looking at? Instagram, which I love and use every, every moment of every day, basically. Um, so, oh shoot, I don't have the chat room open. But if you go to zapier.com slash zapbook, um, that will take you to every single app that we integrate with. And from there, you can click on that app, and it will tell you everything that's possible with that, that particular app. So I'm looking at the Instagram page. Um, and let's see, new media from feed, new media by location. So the best we can do is uh, whenever you like a photo or video on Instagram, we can send that over to Buffer. So if you like something, that will automatically push into your Buffer queue. Um, or if you wanted to, we've got a, a trigger called new media from feed. So that would actually take your entire Instagram feed. So every photo that comes in from the people that you follow, that would push them uh, to your buffer queue. So those are the two, two options there that kind of get you the closest. Excellent, excellent. Um, let's see. Is there a limit to the number of posts queued up within Buffer? Um, that is a good question. From Buffer's end, it probably is going to depend on um, the account you have with us, um, the individual account, and that is otherwise known as the free plan. Um, that is going to be limited to 10 posts in your queue. Um, awesome and business plans, um, those have unlimited posts, so you'll be able to share and store up as much content as you like. 
So from our end, it, um, it would be the amount of data that you sent from whatever tool to Buffer. And our free account, you can do that 100 times uh, within a month. And then our paid plans start, I think the next level up would be 3,000 tasks a month. So um, plenty, plenty to fill up your buffer queue for sure. Wow. Let's see what else we got here. Can I schedule a tweet rather than adding to a buffer queue to go out, say, 24 hours after it's triggered? Um, I think, is that, a, is that a Zapier question, I think? After it's triggered. So we're only going to be able to handle the trigger. Um, the trigger is going to happen immediately. So whenever, as soon as that one thing happens, it's going to get sent to Buffer. However, we do have an, a, a Buffer action, I should say, that was scheduled. That In, in the uh, spirit of full transparency, I have not <laughs> spent much time uh, looking into. Um, so I don't know if I can even answer that question well. But we do have an add to schedule action. So everything that we looked at today was adding just directly to your buffer queue. Um, but we have an add to schedule action, which the help text on it uh, says that will add an item to your buffer queue scheduled at a specific time in the future. So you may want to play around with that a little bit and see if it gets you um, closer to what you're looking for, but um, I am not as familiar with that particular action as I am just adding things to your buffer queue, but it it might be possible. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, I forgot to add all those um, content curation things I referenced into the chat, so I'm just going to do that now um, in case anybody wants to grab those and get some new tools and tricks and newsletters for content curation. Meanwhile, yeah. let's see if there are any more questions we can answer here. And like I said, um, we will. if you come back to this page anytime later today or forever uh, in the future, we will have all these resources here for you so you can check them out um, at your leisure. Awesome. Has Buffer Zapier composed a comprehensive how-to architecture document to set up a social media framework for different types of uses, like bloggers, corporate blogs, personal uses, etc. Man, that would be really sweet. That would be fun. We should do that. We should do that. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> We're going to do that because I think that would be really, really handy to have. <laughs> so the answer is no, but but maybe in the future. Um, to that I mean, one. we don't have them together. Like, uh, what, what's our new what's our new code name? Buffier. Um, yeah. Buffier. But. We, I'm sure that we have our own case studies. I imagine you guys have your own case studies. So um, there's definitely individual resources you can check out. Together we don't, but um, yeah. Courtney is the writer in our relationship, so I'm sure she will come up with something fun for us to do there. But when you do, when you go to Buffer's page with Zapier, you do see some of the most popular um, yes. zaps, and I I find that really handy to sort of like get the idea of like what other people are doing. That gives me ideas of like what I could do. I should probably go through Zapier and do that with like lots of different tools just to see like what what's possible. Yeah, there's a our our zap book is a never ending, literally never ending resource of. Um, over a million different permeations of things you can do. <laughs> There's so much you can do, which is why it's awesome to do things like this, where you just start to like get ideas, see how other people are using it. Um, and if you've got particular ways that you use um, Buffer and Zapier together that we haven't talked about today that you would like to share, um, we would we would definitely love to hear those. We always want to um, keep making um, both of those tools uh, work better and more efficiently for you, and it's just neat to find out how people are using it. So um, yeah, we'd love to we'd love to hear from you on those. Yeah, um, I think one we'll more. Wrap this up oh yeah, good one. Or unless you've got one more you want to tackle. No, no, I think we're good. Sorry. Okay. Well, <laughs> thanks for everyone for coming. This was uh, a lot of fun. I'm I like getting to do this with my friends, uh, and I'm really glad that everyone uh, came. Thank you for your time, Courtney. I really appreciate it. You've uh, you've been very generous to me, and I appreciate that. Thank uh, you for and I, having us. Thank you for thinking of Buffer. This was really really fun. We're we're gonna run with this Buffier moniker for sure. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Bugs, it's all happening. <laughs> One other thing I'll quickly mention. Um, I'm sure many of you know how to find uh, Courtney or uh, the awesome help team at Buffer. What what's is it? Um, what's your email address, Courtney? Not yours, but you're like. Oh, uh, hello at bufferapp.com is a great way to to grab us anytime. And then my personal is Courtney at bufferapp.com if you want to say hi or send me a panda gif or ask me a question. 
love all of those things. A bunch of people have been asking if this is going to be recorded, and I feel like the answer is yes, but you can just tell people where they can find this in the future. Yeah, you can literally, in, in 10 minutes, refresh this page, and you will see a recording. That's the cool thing about um, Hangouts on Air is it records automatically, and then it will go right into the spot where you're watching it right now. So um, the video will be there. All the resources will be below it that we talked about. I just need to add them here. And um, then at the very bottom of the page, there will be the zaps that we talked about, and you can just one button click and start using those. Um, so you've got Cordy's information. Um, we're at contact at zapier.com. You can email us anytime. We're I know that Cord the buffer is almost at 24-hour support, and we're getting very, very close ourselves too. So um, just about any time of day, you can find us there. Uh, you can find me too, allison.groves at zapier.com. That's a mouthful. Um, but thank you, Courtney, and thank you everyone so much for joining us. And like I said, you can come back to this page in just a couple of minutes, and we it will be around forever, and this recording and all these resources. And uh, yeah, we'd love to also love to hear any really cool ways that you use Buffer and Zapier together. So thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Courtney, for being uh, a good co-pilot today, and uh, yeah. we will chat with everybody soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.